So yeah, like I was saying, I'm Kelsey Bratcher. Okay, so my, my company's Higher Gun Solutions. I've been working with uh, different small business owners for the past 14 years, as he said. Uh, one of the things I want to point out is there's a gentleman, a house painter, that kind of brought me into the world of automation and which ended up uh, connecting me with a guy that we all know, and that's uh, Mr. Jim Hacking. I want to take a moment to thank both Tyson and Jim for being so generous as to letting me use their stage to talk about uh, automation intake. For the past three years or so, up until recently, I I've been living in an RV, traveling in the country, and helping people uh, automate different systems and processes in their business. This is a photo of me and my family, my wife and my youngest daughter over at Mount Rushmore with uh, <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt look like. Uh, the reason I share this stuff with you is that all the processes that I've created for my businesses and for my clients uh, has been gone to allow me to be able to operate from the road continuously for three years during COVID and all that kind of stuff. And so I wanna make sure that some of those things are kind of explained. So the first, the, the thing we wanna talk about with the ultimate intake system, we have to go and talk about the first intake system. Uh, the main thing you're gonna think about is the beauty and its simplicity. And that first intake system is uh, just a piece of paper. So all the crazy tools and everything that we've been talking about, if we just focus on what a piece of paper and what an intake system based on this might look like, what if your phone rings and you have someone on the phone, you write their name on it, you write down their phone number, and you go through some of the stuff that Russ and Gary had been talking about. And then when you have to transfer this information to attorney, uh, either because there's a meeting that you're scheduling or you're physically transferring it, you could take this piece of paper and walk over to another person and hand it to them and have everything that they need to know. But since then, uh, intake process has started to look more like this. And so you have, I don't know, any, at any given time, a dozen or so different tools that have to work together perfectly in conjunction with your team, and it just gets kind of messy. And so one of the things I want to break down is you can't get away from this today unless you go back to using paper. Some of these tools are going to be involved no matter how you look at it. Some of you have already chosen different tools, and we're going to talk about some of how those things can interact together. But uh, this is not an abnormal tech stack that I've encountered. I mean, we have some redundancy here, but you can kind of get an idea. So we want to talk about the fundamentals of the ultimate intake system. And Gary's touched on this. Uh, if you think about the conversation that uh, Russ just went over, the first thing we want to focus on is that our process needs to be one call closable. And this is what, what this means is that if a person calls your office, that you can take them for beginning to end, not every single time, but from beginning to end and be able to sign a new client without them having to you know, waste time scheduling an appointments, postponing them. You want any delays in the process to be client facing more than your own process, right? Like telling somebody that you have to set up a, an appointment with them a week from now is gonna cause, introduce a delay that you've now imposed on the client when they would be ready to go. Uh, an example of this, I was just at a car dealership last week. I stopped in randomly to get a price on a truck that I have. Uh, and I was able to talk to a salesperson, get a quote for my truck and buy a new car in less than an hour at a car dealership. Like we're going through financing everything. And I was, they had a whole crazy uh, system in place for doing that, but it's a fa I've never gone through a car dealership in an hour. And so one of the things that reminded me of when this presentation is that that one call cl closable process. Uh, I was ready to go buy a car and get through everything. And you have people calling your office, not everybody, but most people that are gonna call through will accept the pace in which you want them to operate at. So why not allow that to be as fast as possible? Uh, we also wanna look at keeping everything as repeatable and as clean as pro uh, possible. Uh, it creates confusion for your clients. If every single person that calls in is treated differently, uh, how can you establish some kind of standardization from the people that are answering your phone, whether it's reception or Smith or whatever you got going on, how that handoff takes place with your intake team. And if you have any attorney or other type of sales function in the process, like the, ideally that needs to operate where 80, 90, 95% of the time, it's always the same. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And the, the one thing I wanna do as well is like, if you look at the piece of paper, it's very easy to collect the information that you want from a, a PNC uh, step by step, literally following each field all the way through the process, and it takes hardly any effort. When we introduce like a lot of the technology, these tools kind of like force somebody to like skip around, open the windows, click around, all these different places, 
and it creates kind of like a, a big pain in the ass. It causes a lot of confusion, especially if you have older people on your team, they might have uh, issues with like how all these different tech tools work together. And so you want to create it and silo it as much as possible. The next step we're going to be looking at is kind of, I'm going to combine both of these together because uh, multiple tools, it's kind of unavoidable. You're going to have a phone system. You're going to have a CRM. You're going to have a, file a case management system. You might have a different application used for text messaging. And so it's impossible to get away from that. So we want to centralize the information into one place, especially during intake. So if you're going to be communicating with a client either via your phone or via texting, ideally all the records of that information would exist in one place so that you can review you know, what's going on. This also helps you understand any of the KPIs or metrics that you're going to be looking at. Uh, I mentioned earlier with the one call close, we want to be able to shrink and expand the process based on how the client will be interacting. So like if I'm a lazy client and I don't want to meet with you because I'm going on vacation two weeks from now, that's when the appointment should be if I can't meet sooner, right? And uh, if, if I'm ready to go now, I got my, my credit card out or I was just in an accident, I need to just sign an agreement, get that to me as fast as I possibly can and I'm ready to go. And then the last thing we've all learned is that it needs to be 100% remote. There's no reason why you physically need to be present in your office or have anyone be physical present in your office to be able to conduct this going on. Uh, you're going to have people in other countries, other states that participate in your intake process. And therefore, we want to focus on how do we create the piece of paper situation when the person that just talked to the client is in a completely another state. So we're going to talk about now is the components of what these intake machines look like. So the first thing we're going to talk about is like marketing referrals. And like that is a piece of in intake of like I've worked with enough attorneys at this time where I see people are always referring in and you are continuously referring out. You have friends, colleagues, deal, uh, cases that you might receive some type of cut on uh, and being able to track and how that interacts throughout the intake process. Uh, the other piece of missing is that I often find missing is the attribution that comes from let's say like uh, someone clicks on a Google ad and arrives on your website and knowing which ad that that created. And then ultimately, if somebody's closing a week later, how do you provide, how do you count that sale against that ad spend that you just did? Uh, and that flows right into call tracking, which would be the next uh, piece, the marketing channel, is that it helps you identify where that's gonna be coming from. And a lot of people are in this room probably are on call rail or call tracking metrics. Uh, and then the next piece is like, how does, okay, if you're gonna track that a call came in, your phone system uh, and scheduling tools and messaging needs to all be in alignment. So a lot of folks are using Ring Central, Just Call, you have email marketing that is gonna be going out for sending automated communications, uh, and then ultimately scheduling links. So I wanna talk about one quick thing that came up that I didn't have in my presentation when I first went through this, but uh, they had both of them had talked, Russ, had Russ and, Gary both talked about the speed component. So if, if you get a lead on your website, the amount of time that it takes for you to reach out to them, at the minimum, you need to have an email that goes out. What One step better is an email and a text message provided that you've adequately gained permission to text message somebody. And the third step would be to automatically have that person get called. So every lead that you get from a web form, whether it's uh, on your website, a Facebook lead ad, et cetera, that it sets in motion the process for that person to automatically get communicated from you. So the next piece is we have an organization and efficiency. And the, the, the beauty of the piece of paper example that we just talked about is that it, can, it physically exists. You can hand it from one person to another. It can be stuffed in a folder. And uh, it allows you to just transport this piece of information. And uh, we want to talk about, like, <clears throat> let's see here. OK. I got lost for a second. Uh, the piece of paper example is gonna give you the ability to stay organized very easily because you can't get rid of that thing. So how do we create that? We need a proper core and we need to be able to like jam everything all into that proper core and we'll go over that in a minute. So the next pieces are, if you're gonna have reports and metrics, I believe that they should be easy and in real time. And you could pull them up from your phone right now if you wanted to. Uh, when a, cre a key and a critical piece of your Intake process is typically circulated around document signing. I think Gary mentioned that it needs to be a one or two page type of deal. And uh, ideally you can get that into the hands of your prospects 
uh, immediately. Now, getting paid piece is probably the trickiest piece. Uh, is not all of you are going to be getting paid physically up front or during the getting started with a new client. And so if it doesn't apply to you, we're going to talk about that. But more or less, the getting paid piece is the final step of the intake process. Because uh, if they just signed a, re a representation agreement and they owe you $5,000 to get started, we want to make that process as soon as they sign that they're getting asked to pay and your process needs to reflect that. So I want to talk about what are some of the, the viable core options that you can use to build your framework or to, to start encompassing some of these types of steps. So you have uh, a lot of different combinations and you can have all kinds of different combinations of these. But the first off the top, we're going to just talk about Clio Grow plus Manage. If you're using these tool tools together, there's a big infrastructure for how you can start to bolt these things together. Uh, like if you have a new contact created in Clio Ma Manage or CR Clio, <laughs> Clio Grow, you can use that as part of the process for walking somebody through. Uh, the next piece is lead docket and file vine. Those kind of work hand to hand together. They don't have to be used together, but they usually are. Uh, Lawmatics is out there, but you probably need some other stuff to be able to do that. Uh, case, I know there's some my case users in here. Uh, there are some challenges with that, but if you're using my case, you can start to implement some of the different things that we talked about. And of course, custom solutions. And my favorite is pipe drive at the moment. So with PipeDrive, it is not a legal software. Uh, it is a sales tool that's built for small sales organizations to automate and systematize their sales. And so I like to bolt it onto whatever case management system people have. So the next piece I wanna get into is going to be kind of like what the future of this is gonna look like. So I've been working with, in, with a bunch of different attorneys for the past, since basically since co before COVID started. Uh, Jim had me on the podcast a couple of times. Uh, and he's had me, and I've been since introduced to many of you. I've been on Max LawCon a couple of times and getting through the, the public speaking component, being a little nervous. But I'm actually going to be uh, creating a new uh, company, and it's going to be a software company called Automatter, where we're basically going to take a lot of this fancy crap that we've just jammed and jam it all together into one place so that you don't have to learn you know, 50 different tools and try to connect them all together. Now, there's no timeline on this, so I'm just making the announcement today. But uh, I want to go ahead and open up to questions. If anyone has uh, anything that, we've talked, that I talked about mentioned, feel free to come up and we'll, get, we'll, we'll address them. Uh, we'll go you. I think Gary, Gary had said something that stands out, is if you can get that to them while they're still on the phone with you, and you can have them pull it up and go over it with them. And then there's another thing that I've, uh, that I've started. We started doing it with Jim and uh, Giselle Urbina. We, we just recently did this, but in your representation agreement, it doesn't just have to be a bunch of words and like crazy you know, legal stuff. You can put in like the first two or three pages loaded up with like why they should go with you, client testimonials, sales and persuasion tools that then feed into the agreement, right? Where they would then read it and sign their stuff. And so with that, I'm not saying that it's going to solve your particular problem that I have to talk to my husband objection, but at least it gives that person the ability you to go over what, with what the document is with the client. And then they can take, they have to take that thing to their husband to, for them to see it. And now they can, since they weren't there to talk to you, you can kind of give them the high level of that extra value. Um, client testimonials, introducing your team like what the value statement is of the service, if you have any materials that's like sales-ish to support the particular service that you're gonna be doing, I think would probably be, that's what comes to my mind to me, at least. And some of that stuff can be automated depending on what your document templates look like for your representation agreement. Yeah, no worries. I think probably the biggest mistake that people make when rolling out these types of systems is they try to bite off more than they can chew, and they try to do more at one time than they're capable of doing. I think anybody in this room is capable of rolling systems, uh, but where you start is gonna be like, if you have Clio Grow and Clio Manage, and you're not using stack effectively, I'm not saying that out of the question, but like if you can't get up what you already have, then you should probably focus on that and, and bolt on what the next logical piece is. And then that way, when it comes to evaluating other options, is it worth the time and effort to do so? 
right? So like, I mean, Jim and I have probably swapped out of every major provider aside from uh, Law, Lawmatics. I think it's the only option that we didn't, we didn't actually go through. And he, we, were, we kept running into walls where it's like, in order to do this faster, we have to switch to a different tool. Or we, in order to get QuickBooks working the way that we want, we have to switch to a different tool. So we had viable and, and real calculations went into making the decision of making those types of transitions. Because like if I were to say, and then one other thing is like with intake, if you're using a file, like FileVine for practice management, the thought of leaving FileVine is probably gonna keep you up at night for a year. And it's gonna take a long time, it's gonna be the worst painful thing. You're not gonna try to do it, right? But with intake, it can be detached very easily without a huge amount of issues. And that would be kind of one of the things is like, don't think of them as separate because then one's transportable and you can hop around to the next best tool. And your team will be a lot more tolerant of those types of changes than they would with something aggressive like changing your practice management app. In the back. I like, uh, so the tool that I like to use is called PandaDoc. It's not a legal specific op option. It's for, like a lot of sales organizations use it for doing like proposals. Uh, it has a lot more sales functionality and it's not like an op, you know, uh, that's how I explain. They have like a built-in Canva editor. So you can like make really pretty looking uh, pages of your document for sales purposes really easily. So you can take your existing PDF and you can load it up into PandaDoc and then put in the little merge tokens for however you need to do it. And that's, that's my favorite go-to. And it, it would allow you to take whatever you have now and start from there. And then you can start doing some of the sexier stuff like jamming in some client testimonials and that kind of thing. Uh, you could also use DocuSign. Uh, DocuSign and PandaDoc are probably the most flexible from like an integration perspective. So regardless of what you have, you can bolt this on in either platform using something like Zapier or Integramat slash make. I think it's probably the better way to go. Yeah, it's cheaper. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> Uh, the main benefit is uh, that it's cheaper, it's typically more users and better supported. And it's not always universally true, but that's been my experience. And then you're also gonna save a lot of money, uh, this, which is generally where why I choose to go there. I, I'm just running into hurdles where you get blocked up. Like, I don't wanna name names, but you run into some issues where it's like, why didn't someone else think about this? Because no one in the legal space is messing around with this type of thing. But like over here in real estate or other marketplaces, it's commonplace. And so usually those third party vendors that are kind of not legal specific, they have a massive amount of integrations that are built in and it's just much better supported. And so that's kind of my, my main reason. I'm not saying it's gonna be true forever, but with the current landscape, uh, you have a hard, you'll have a harder time doing some of the fancy stuff that I'm talking about with, if you stay just legal specific. All right, I think I'm just about on time here. Five seconds left. Uh, thank you very much, and I hope that this is helpful.